In this video, I'm going to show you how I built a Chrome extension to block social media while I'm working. So here I've got a new Chrome window open and you can see that if I go to the address bar and type in twitter.com and press enter instead of twitter.com, I get a black screen with a little message that encourages me to get back to work. In my last video, I talked about shifting focus away from game development and more into providing value for the users of the productivity app that I'm building. And one way that I thought that I could provide value for myself while using the app was blocking social media while the app was active. So I mulled over how to do this for a while, and I think the best way that I could come up with was to build a Chrome extension that would be able to determine which websites you're on and block problematic websites that are preventing you from getting work done. Now, ideally, the Chrome extension would only block social media while the Pomodoros were running in my application, but that was a little hard to figure out, and I think I'll explain how I did it in a follow-up video. And first, the first thing I needed to do was to build a Chrome extension that was capable of blocking any social media at all, which meant I needed to learn how to build a Chrome extension. In order to get this to work, you really only need three main things. A manifest file that explains what your extension is and does to Chrome, an HTML file that will show a pop-up when a user clicks on the icon in the Chrome toolbar, and a JavaScript file that will run on each page load in a Chrome browser. Okay, here we are in the manifest file for my Chrome extension. If you're trying to build your own extension, you're gonna need this object and you're gonna need a couple core properties. So first at the top, I have the manifest version set to three. You're also gonna wanna set this to three if you're developing in the year 2023. Then you're gonna wanna have an entry for the name of your extension. The version will probably be set to 0.0.1 .0 until you launch it and then version it with subsequent updates. Next, you will have an array of content scripts. And what this array does is it has an object that has two properties on it. On line seven, we have a matches entry on that object, and that is set to an array with a string of all URLs. And on line eight, we have a JS entry that also is an array that has one string named content.js. So what this is doing is explaining to Chrome that every time I open a new tab that matches anything in my matches array, we're going to run the corresponding JavaScript in our JS array. So for my extension, whenever you open a new tab, my content.js script will be executed. Everything else here isn't that important for basic functionality, except this index.html on line 13 for the default pop-up property on the action object. What that's gonna do is allow our HTML that we're writing to pop up when a user clicks on our icon in the Google Chrome toolbar. And the default title is what will be shown when a user hovers over the icon in the Chrome toolbar. Now, I wanted to use React to style the UI in my Chrome extension, which was definitely overkill. But because of that, the HTML for my Chrome extension looks like this. We have a head and a body with a, a no script tag that just tells the user they need to enable JavaScript if they want to see the contents of that. And then on line 31, we have a div with an ID of root, which is how React is going to hook into this HTML file and display a React application. So finally, let's take a look at my content.js script. I have an array of websites to block here at the top of the file. And this is an array of corresponding strings that are the names of websites that I want my extension to block. Then I have a function called get focus time. What that's gonna do is query the local storage to see if there is a variable set to whether or not it is focus time. Um, but I'm not using that function right away. Instead, I'm creating a variable on line 20 called focus time and logging it on page load. So this will always be undefined initially, probably. Um, and then I have two functions here, block bad sites and unblock bad sites. So I'm calling on line 58 this block bad sites function. So let's take a look at what that does. Here, if it is focus time, which for me is sometimes true, um, then we're gonna loop over the domain of websites to block. So we're gonna loop over the array that I created here on line two. 
So as we loop over that, if the window.location.hostname includes the domain that we're looking at, we're going to create a new node using document.createElementDiv. So that's going to create a new node. We're going to add an ID onto that node. And here I'm just using test12345 to get it working. Then I'm going to grab the style property on that node and then the CSS text property on that style object. And I'm going to set it to a string value of inline styles. And what that is going to do is set this div to be absolutely positioned. The width and height are going to be 100% of the window. Then the Z index is going to be 100 just to make sure that it's above everything on the page. The background is going to set to be a color of black and we are going to position it to the top left corner of the window. Then we're going to grab the inner HTML property on that new node that we're creating and set that to an inline string that is going to be a div with a style where the color of that text is going to be white. We're going to use uh, display flex to align the div here. But basically that div is going to uh, wrap some text that just says get back to work and we're centering that within the new node that we're creating. As I showed earlier, this will block twitter.com, but it will block any site that's included in that array of sites to block. So if I go to instagram.com, you'll see that that's also blocked. Or if I go to somewhere like reddit.com, a significant time sink for me, you can see that that's also blocked. I had to learn a lot about Chrome extensions and how they work in order to get this working for me. So if you have questions on how to get your Chrome extension working, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer as quickly as I can. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.